These next couple of tunes were uh, a huge hit in Tibet back in the early 1980s. Uh, in late 80s, my wife uh, Anne was uh, traveling in, in Tibet and she was in Lhasa. She kept hearing this tune playing everywhere she went and uh, it was a real earworm that really stuck with her and eventually she saw some guy with a little stall selling cassettes and she tried to make herself understood and he said, ah, this is what you want. And he handed her a little cassette. Uh, it was all in Tibetan, so, you know, it made no sense to us, but she brought it home and then I fell for it too. Really, really love these tunes. Uh, stayed with me all these years. I ended up recording a super elaborate version of this for one of my recent records, uh, not an acoustic record. And uh, the thing that bothered me was that I did, just didn't know who to credit it to. And then I had tried uh, asking people who knew Tibetans and nobody could make any sense of it. But uh, eventually, just before going to press with, my, with this record, I said, I'm gonna give this one more try. And I put in a few keywords and it came up. I figured out who the guy was. His name was Jampa Tsering. And he was uh, responsible for kind of bringing uh, Tibetan folk music into the modern world. He'd studied at some sh uh, conservatory in Shanghai and sort of came back and electrified things. And uh, this it was actually a really huge hit. Uh, unfortunately, he died in the 90s in a car crash. But uh, I like keeping his memory alive. And uh, so I call this little suite uh, the uh, Fellowship of Turing. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Now that we've visited the, uh, the Uyghurs and the Tibetans, uh, it would only be fair to uh, give some time to their mortal enemies, the Chinese. 
So, another little medley of Chinese uh, traditional music that I've uh, rearranged. Uh, the first is an excerpt from a tune called A Hundred Birds Adore the Phoenix. And it's uh, typically it's a showcase for a swana, which is a, like a double reed instrument, um, imitating bird song. Um, my options are limited on an acoustic guitar with the bird song, but anyway play a little bit of that and then that's going to lead into a song called Dance Song of the E People, which is a minority people native to southwest China. <laughs>
part of the world that's you know, deeply influenced me musically, but I haven't actually visited is Brazil. Uh, I'm going to play a couple songs. One is uh, one of my own tunes called Tanabasa, and it's uh, in the Brazilian spirit. And then that's followed by a tune by um, Lo Borges, who was uh, one of the original street corner club kids with Milton Nascimento down in Minas Gerais. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks. I'm going to finish up with uh, a couple of somewhat related pieces. Uh, I became enchanted with some music I found on an old Smithsonian Folkways cassette called Musics of the Soviet Union. And there were a couple of pieces of uh, male choral music from Georgia that were very helpfully titled Georgian Music One, Georgian Music Two. Uh, and I, you know, I was just really taken by it, and I uh, looked into it a little bit and found out that arguably um, the Georgian choral music is uh, the first instance of polyphonic choral music on the planet. Anyway, I came up with an arrangement of one of those pieces, and then there's another piece that uh, has always been kind of knocking around in my mind since I was, uh, since I heard it on the radio as a, as a youth, and it was the, a rainy night in Georgia. And uh, so I'm kind of stitching these two together, my arrangements of both, and I'm calling it uh, Georgia's On My Mind. <laughs> and with that, uh, I will bid you adieu, and I want to thank again Chaos and the Cosmos for invo involving me on their special night, and uh, also thrilled to be on stage again with uh, oscillations, everything oscillating. So, all right. <laughs>
Thanks again.